been really interesting to hear about these amazing collaborative and long-running collaborative projects because Aretha and I also are here in the capacity of our collaboration. We have solid practices as well, um, both visual art solid practices, and we're always really big fans of each other's work. And then finally sort of had the idea that maybe we could um, collaborate together. Now, interestingly, our collaboration stemmed from an idea of having works that we that were from our own practices that we weren't really sure what to do with. We didn't know how to finish them. We didn't really know what they were. And we sort of needed that other person to bounce those works and ideas off to see what they become in that context. So we started to swap works backwards and forwards with each other. And then, and it was always, I know, an incredible privilege for me because I can't afford to buy one of her works, but <laughs> I'm allowed to draw on it. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. afford your works, but I wasn't actually drawing That's right. So um, that's how our work started. And we both have quite, we have really, we, one of the things that we discovered early on is we have really similar interests in our resource material, our references, but in a lot of things as well. And that um, the sort of thing that happens when we combine our work together. So it was a very, um, as opposed to <coughs> um, beginning as a fairly conceptual collaboration, it was a very practice-based, drawing-based collaboration and about swapping. So about finding the place where you meet as and opposed to... problem solving. Yeah, that's right. Solving. That's right. So these are really early works of ours. And you see they're all, um, we can't see, but they're all dated from 2000 and 10 to 2015, we largely worked just in that way for five years. Um, we didn't really show the work at all. A few people would see them when they went to the studio. Word was kind of got out a little bit, but we basically just kept it between ourselves as a, a way of working, I guess, for five years. Um, we were then um, persuaded to, um, or and we wanted to, we, have, wanted we to. had an exhibition at um, Sarah Scout Presents in the city. Yeah. And that was our first kind, of, the first time that people had seen these works really. Still, at this point, a really drawing-based practice, and you can sort of, and the, the kind of interesting thing for us, I guess, was the way that it fed between our collaborative work and then back into our own into our own yeah. practice. But then also, in having an exhibition, you have or and having an audience that's mm -hmm. not us, that you have to formalise that. Process or that collaboration. Probably the, the, yeah. the most formal point that we yeah. we've reached up to that stage. Yeah. I mean, the first time in five years that we were. These were out. They, they were yeah. pretty much in a folio yeah. until that point. So I guess it, it, we framed them. We had this this show. We, uh, the as in like a collaboration, the difference between having an audience and not having an audience changes the work. Yeah. I guess also, yeah. So it was a really big thing for us at that time. And also that's probably the time that we came up with, well, we gave it a name. Yes. So basically it started as a, a separate practice, your practice, my practice, yeah. and this was the in-between practice that only existed when we both together. Yeah, yeah. So Silkstead, do you want to explain where the name, the name? is? So Silkstead basically was um, an imaginary girlfriend of a very old dear friend of mine that he had sort of made up when he was 12, 13, on holiday, um, hormones, yeah. all these things going on. So he made up this girlfriend that was <laughs> Sylvester von Bergen, so she had a surname as well. <laughs> she had a backstory, complete. There was a very long yeah. story to it, but anyway, so we decided that that name was perfect for us yeah. because it was the imaginary girlfriend or the imaginary Girl, woman. Yeah, the imaginary between, woman. The imaginary yeah. entity in the shape of a woman between <coughs> us. That yeah. would only exist when we both were together and otherwise she doesn't. So an imaginary practice. That's yeah, not just but not yeah. a practice, but yeah. yeah. But I guess like a thing that only happens when these things meet. Yeah. So we the really great thing about having to have an audience and having to have a show and to think about things in that way, because we could have worked indefinitely just folio swapping drawings, but that, to think like that, it was like a big escalation for us. We started to think about space, material, and 
a lot of other um, things. And I, I guess this is the first time that we sort of moved off paper mm. and our first sort of textile work as well, where we took, we took one of our works, the drawings, which we then worked on and kind of enlarged and brought yeah. it onto, in, into a textile medium. And this is one of the things I guess that we find, we found really fascinating about tapestries as well, is their multifunction. Use. Yeah, you know they 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 can warm a space. They work acoustically, but then also um, when being a visual artist and a person that makes art, like thinking about space, you know, or, or objects. But then the difference maybe with well. this piece was I'm just trying to think yeah. that when we did this piece, this was originally meant to not be seen because it was, be in the it was supposed yeah. to be in the bed, so we didn't want to make a throw or a, what do you call it? Bed spread. Bed spread yeah. of something yeah. that, that kind of happened yeah. through the gallery. But it was something that was meant to be hidden, concealed, because what it portrays yeah. is, well, it's basically part of a, a book, I can't remember the name of but it's a pact with the devil. So that then appears... Um, we kind of like the idea of that being inside of a bed. Yeah, oh, a secret, yeah. a bit of a secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So that, and then from there we were um, invited to be a part of um, spring 1883 at the Windsor Hotel in Sydney yeah. with, that was with Sarah oh. Scarif as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that, oh that was the previous work and then this work was at the spring at the Windsor establishment. Oh this is no, not this was the Windsor. Windsor. Yeah. So, um, one of the things we love to go, so the, the the Spring 1883 is like an art fair that's um, it originally was running at the same time as the art fair at the exhibition building before that finished. Mm. And so, but um, it's quite prohibitively expensive to be a part of that art fair. So a few galleries banded together and would basically hire out suites in the Windsor Hotel just down the road and use that those spaces as exhibiting spaces. Um, the great thing, or the great thing for us that we found really exciting about that as an idea was that these spaces are already really busy with Windsor furniture mm -hmm. and interior design, which is very particular, but also really along the lines of our aesthetic. And the aesthetic, and also probably the historical period that we kind of interested yeah. in, which is not yep. through from the 15th century yep. to 19th mm -hmm. century, which is the Windsor. Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we basically bought, for this work, we bought a table that was the same as the tables that they had for Windsor, <coughs> so that we could swap it out with our table. But our table, um, you can see probably, I don't know if you can see these images, but maybe in a few images to come, but that we just got uh, dremels and... Um, engraving tools. Engraving tools and that sort of thing, you just drew. So we took our drawing off again, thinking about materials, we took our drawing off the page. Yeah onto a table basically. We wanted that idea of um, a table like a school desk or a table in an inn or a pub or something like that that just kind of had, you know, like, oh, like a toilet door or, you know, just got that. A <coughs> type of messaging also, messaging back and forth and also to the audience obviously, yeah. but kind of, again, historically um, trying to, yeah, write a story but also to show a history. A show a history yeah. there. And obviously we were working together on this table for about six months. So during that time, our conversations, yeah. our interests, mm. people that would visit, uh, some of the names are embedded as well, um, people that would bring us food or anything, um, or, or, or added to the discussion, mm. would become part of this table. So it's quite a communal, it was quite yeah. a communal. Um, yeah. And it marked okay. another shift in our work together in that mm. we were, would work together and we'd work together sitting around the table as well. So it's a different kind of, it went from that sort of swapping backwards and forth collaboration to one where we spent time together to work on it. And the physicality of the table was actually really convenient but also really great to work on as well. <laughs> and they kind of, you can see that we've got our references and our cups of tea or whatever on the table with us that we're working directly on. So yeah. it's a very... And then we would swap going mm -hmm. around the table yeah. and thus filling it. Not only the top, but also we then decided during yeah. sort of halfway through that we thought that it might be very interesting to have more of a story on Yeah, there's the much more on the bottom, bottom than on the side, top. Which was um, more like a secret history. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was the sort of naughty stuff on the bottom. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was rough. And, yeah. So, you know, um, then we were, and we were sort of interested in the role of these objects as, as usable objects as well as, as drawings. Mm. So we started to work then on, and this is something that's ongoing for us as well, um, in um, engraving directly onto glass as well. So we've made a series of these. This is a couple of the first. Well, this not the, the first, first ones, but almost prototypes. Yeah, the not quite. No, yeah. yeah, but of uh, engraving onto glasses, and these were a pair because we worked together, and we'd have these glasses and swap them backwards and forwards, and we'd work together on them. So the only condition really always would be we both of, we had to work well not we have to but we mm. work both of us on uh, each object yeah so there can't yeah. be an object that has only me or only you can be very yeah but we don't it's not like we have that as a rule or whatever but it's it's, it's that happens. yeah yeah, yeah. but it's that's that's yeah. part of the process and it could be only a tiny bit it could be just a mistake that you make yeah. Yeah. could be I could work around that be enough it yeah. be enough it doesn't have to be or just the some sort and so these these. Um, these works were for a fundraiser for caves and the um, way that we showed them on the night was by using them as glasses. So, so activated yeah. in the space by us using them yeah. and then basically selling them off for the fundraiser which yeah. happened for them. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah, yeah so I guess, um, I think more. that's it. <laughs> A little bit more? Oh no, one more. That's okay, more. so this is the, the latest. We, we showed the table at um, a caves off-site exhibition at Substation Gallery in Newport. In Newport. Yeah. You can see maybe a little bit more the work that's on the some of the engravements. One of the problems that we did, I mean, this is not the time to talk about problems, but this what the problem <laughs> is that if there's so know? much on it that it's really really hard to document and to somehow yeah. trace. It is really it's something that you'd want to be in the presence of and just yeah, yeah. even we see things sometimes, I see things and say, where did that come from? How did it even happen? When did you do that? I'm, I'm not aware of this. And then, so it's, yeah, it's very hard to document and to kind of... When you show the whole thing, you can't see any of the detail. When you show the detail, you can't see the whole. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. paradoxical like that. But, and this is another glass work, and this has got holes that go all the way through the glass so that so when you put wine in it, it Never, it never fills up. Maybe. I need one of those every <laughs> So another um, thing, maybe just it's not very visible on this, but there's a drawing on the wall as well that was um, made in conjunction with the table. And what we did was we ordered frames that were sort of as a commission, I suppose, with the framer to have to be exactly mm -hmm. the same wood and colour and everything. And the frames are engraved as well as a continuation from the table onto. Mm -hmm. Sort of a connection again back to the drawings. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that this sort of comes to the end of um, it. Sort of gives you a bit of an idea of our practice, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and our interest, I guess, in coming here yeah. was purely to, initially as a materi materiality. You know, like just to kind of think about different ways and different materials to use. But I think also the collaborative aspect was really interesting for us, and I think a real amazing part of our experience here so far because we've still got a few weeks to go is just being experiencing that and particularly seeing a project like that amazing it's a huge um, project which is also collaborative yeah, yeah yeah seeing that kind of get up and seeing the way that um and i know particularly for me um you know because we also wanted an opportunity to see what happens when we take our work outside of our studio to somewhere else yeah. and that's been actually really incredible for us because it's changed the way that we work. It's something that we haven't really done. It's either been in Sharon's mm. studio or my studio, like you've got studio in China, I've got yeah. studio in the Nicholas building, so we sort of go back and forth, back and forth, but we haven't really worked in a, in a third space. And, yeah. and something happens when you work in a third. It just changes yeah. the way you draw, it changes your line, it changes yeah. um, your thinking. So we've, and, yeah. and we've had obviously yeah. a thought uh, yeah. on process on how to expand this again as well into other um, places of space. Yeah, not we've, we've got a, now a short list of places, <laughs> the other places that we want to try as to work in. Yeah, as in like intensive retreats or <laughs> that sort of <laughs> style yeah. of yeah. Yeah. And yeah. see kind of yeah. what happens to our practice because yeah. I didn't realise that I was so sensitive 
So to be here, I've been actually incredibly inspired by the way the way that it's physically set up. It's mod yeah. the way that it's modular. modular and everything on wheels. I'm thinking about remodeling our studio. We want this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, it's, it's pretty phenomenal it's been, to see the, the space change mm. in a really short time yeah. from one function to another. Like it's been good. So even mm. the very short time really that we've been able to, you know, that we've yeah. been here, we've only got a couple of weeks left. It's yeah. quite incredible yeah. how much changes and how much it does do. Yeah. Um, and the influence. Yeah. And the so, influence. So we've and because we haven't sort of used the residency in the way that we've done the weaving, but I think it's a it's been probably one of the most influential things that we've yeah. done together. So yeah, yeah that's. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.